Welcome to Bailey B. Believes What is Grooming segment. Today, I will go into detail about what grooming is, the red flags of grooming, and what you can do to make a difference. Grooming, which is also known as mind games, is highly manipulative behavior intended to fool the family and the victim. Grooming the family is a technique utilized by the sexual predator in order to gain alone time with the child. The purpose of grooming is to ultimately fool the victim into thinking the abuse was his or her fault. The sexual perpetrator plays these mind games with the victim to ensure that he or she stays quiet. Once the sexual predator has the trust and access, then they can begin to manipulate and test the waters with the child. Grooming is a slow process and very sneaky. The sexual predator pushes to see how far they can get with the child and pulls back when they get resistance. Then the predator will start back up slowly to push again. A predator will continue to push and pull to break down the child's inhibition in order to get their end result of satisfying their sexual need. In a moment, I will share a list with you and then provide details about each one. However, it is important to remember that grooming is a big picture. While we have all probably tickled a child, our intentions might not have been to later sexually abuse that child. It is when a predator does a lot of little things that add up over time which makes a bigger picture. Eight signs of grooming include number one, desensitizing a child to touch. Number two, desensitizing a child to attention. Number three, the guilt trap. Number four, gift giving. Number five, lap sitting. Number six, seeking alone time with a child. Number seven, teaching a child to keep secrets. And number eight, stepping over boundaries set by the parents and or the child. Let's take a look at number one, desensitizing a child to touch most desensitizing is focused on erogenous zones. These behaviors include tickling, caressing ears, tucking hair behind the ear, slowly rubbing upper thighs, tickling or caressing feet, gently rubbing arms, etc. This also includes accidental touching. The predator will make it look accidental, however it is very intentional and serves the purpose of getting a need met. Number two, desensitizing a child to attention. These behaviors include an abundance of picture taking, videotaping, watching a child get undressed, walking in on a child when he or she's in the bath, having a child run around naked while taking pictures and or videotaping. Number three, the guilt trap. This behavior includes breaking down a child's intuition by making them feel guilty when they do say no. For example, an uncle says, it's time to give me a kiss, I need to go now. The child then chooses not to give a kiss and the child says no. The uncle then says, oh man, your sister gave me a kiss, aren't you going to? Number four, gift giving. This behavior includes giving a child gifts and or favors to make the child feel special. This also includes gift giving that the parents would especially prohibit such as drugs, alcohol, etc. Number five, lap sitting. This behavior includes an adult placing a child into their lap or probing a child to come and sit in their lap. It is important to pay attention to who is initiating the lap sitting. Make sure there's a policy of no lap sitting in the facilities where your child participates. Number six, seeking alone time with a child. The majority of abuse occurs when a sexual perpetrator is alone with a child. Therefore, sexual predators seek to normalize alone time by taking the child off to have one-on-one -on -one time with them. 
Once a sexual predator gains access to have alone time with a child, then the predator might continue to groom by rubbing ears, telling secrets, etc., with the ultimate goal of being to sexually abuse that child. Number seven, teaching a child to tell and to keep secrets. Due to the nature of sexual perpetrators wanting to keep their victims quiet, sexual predators will seek to normalize secret telling with a child. Once the child thinks it is okay to tell and keep secrets, then the sexual perpetrator will ask the child to keep the secret or else. A sexual perpetrator will also use manipulative and scare tactics to keep the child quiet. For example, I will kill your family if you tell, I will go to jail if you tell, nobody will believe you, etc. And lastly, number eight, stepping over boundaries set by the parents and or the child. Once again, a sexual predator will try and break down the natural inhibitions of the child by resisting their no. For example, an adult friend says to your child, come here, while motioning with his finger. The child replies with no. The friend then says, oh, come here. The child repeats no while stomping her foot. The parent in the room reinforces the child's no by saying, that's right, no means no. The friend then proceeds to step over the boundaries of the child and the parent by saying, yes, come here. So, now that you know the eight signs of grooming, how can you make a difference? It is so important to be aware that grooming can and does take place in front of parents and other adults. By being aware of these red flags, you are more likely to set up boundaries so that you can send a strong message to the adult and the child that these behaviors are not okay. If a child believes that these behaviors are okay, then a sexual predator can continue to go down the path of least resistance and set the child up for abuse that he or she can easily get away with. Setting boundaries does not mean you are accusing that person of being a sexual predator. Setting boundaries does indicate to every party involved that grooming behaviors are unacceptable and sends a strong message that the behaviors will not be tolerated by any adult or older youth. Setting boundaries are a necessity to ensure you are always erring on the side of any child. It is important to educate, encourage, and empower the people in your own home and facilities where your children participate to prohibit all eight signs of grooming. Together, we can change our culture to ensure that our children are safer and well cared for at all times. Thank you so much for taking your time to become educated on such an important matter. You will find more empowering information in our parental guide when purchasing our educational DVD. We look forward to hearing your stories about how you have educated your children and the community to prevent sexual abuse. If you have any questions or comments, please contact us at info at baileybbelieves.com.